This is from my website, uh, blackstoneintel.com. This I had posted back on March 17th. And I talked about how uh, right after Israel did what they did, the Trump administration moved swiftly to seek similar powers of surveillance over U.S. citizens. The U.S. government is in negotiations with major social media corporations, including Google, Facebook, and numerous tech companies, to determine how they can pull their cell phone tracking technologies to do the same thing in America that is being done in Israel. Private corporations, most notably Google, have been amassing troves of user data for years using citizen smart techno technologies and internet search histories. That private data is now up for grabs in the name of protecting the public health and preventing the spread of CV. Uh, and so what had happened was uh, the Trump administration brought in tech executives and and their corporate investors. They met privately at the White House to talk about proposals. So this is not something that's just being done out in the you know out of the blue and Trump doesn't know about it. They were invited to the White House to figure out how can we combine uh, Facebook, Google. Uh, Twitter, Apple, all of these different uh, uh, big tech companies, how can we take that data, combine it with investment from, from private investors, use technology programs such as what's being done in, in Israel, how can we lump all of that together and benefit the, the, uh, uh, the investors and benefit the government? to be able to monitor citizens. So it is absolutely ridiculous if anyone were to take the position that, that Trump or the Trump administration is not fully on board with this. It simply is not true. In fact, uh, you can look here. Uh, Trump says the U.S. is ready to contain uh, CV with contact tracing. And, uh, and he, he says, this is Trump. We've gotten good at tracing during his briefing. Now, wh what is tracing? Uh, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, let me pause this here. States build contact tracing armies to crush CV. State governments are building armies of, C of, of contact tracers in a new phase of the battle against the CV pandemic returning to a fundamental practice in public health that can at once wrestle the, the uh, CV under control and put hundreds of thousands of newly jobless people back to work. So, hey, that's one way to package and sell this. We're giving jobs to Americans. What are the jobs? Your job is to go out and help rat out your fellow citizen. California is already conducting contact tracing in 22 counties and eventually plans to field a force of 10,000 state employees who will be given basic training by University of California health experts. Massachusetts and Ohio have partnered with Partners in Health uh, to establish support programs in Haiti, uh, established to support programs in Haiti to field teams of contact tracers. Uh, and you know, all these states and who they're working with uh, these states are using their National Guards to trace contacts of those who have been infected. In Kansas, 400 people volunteered to trace contacts. In Utah, 1,200 state employees have raised their hands. Contact tracing is a pillar of basic public health, a critical element in battling infectious disease around the globe. The goal is to identify those who have been infected with a virus and, and those with whom the infected person has come into contact. If those contacts then come down with CV, they can be quickly isolated so they do not spread it further. They can also be treated, making it less likely to develop the most severe uh, system, uh, symptoms. Now, here's, here's the concern. Uh, all right, this is, I won't read this. Google releases location data to help authorities check lockdowns. This is being done uh, in, um, in the UK uh, and elsewhere, the, uh, and also here in the United States. Uh, location data is being released by Google in 131 countries so officials can see if people are obeying self-isolating rules. 
Community Mobility Reports. March is when many countries around the world brought in their lockdown rules. Uh, the Google data comes after surveillance firm NSO Group, which is an Israeli company. This is an Israeli intelligence company, a private intelligence company in Israel, filled with, with former Mossad agents. Google data comes after surveillance firm NSO Group this week claimed it was in talks with governments around the world about using its tracking software, which is already, already being tested by some nation states, and I would add, including the United States. Google's analysis of location data, meanwhile, has come from billions of users' phones, those phones with a Google account that has location sharing enabled. Um, now, is this really going to be a, a problem? Are they just talking about it here or are they actually doing it? Well, let's take a look. Uh, we've talked about how Senator Richard Burr and other Senate Republicans are in on this uh, biosurveillance and contact tracing. We've talked about how Donald Trump and his administration is fully on board with it. And Trump himself has bragged about how good his administration is at this contact tracing. And now we've got the Democrats. Uh, this one, Bobby Rush, a member of the U.S. House uh, from Illinois. Now Bobby Rush introduces, and this is his own uh, page, House page. Rush introduces bipartisan legislation to fund 100 billion CV testing and contact tracing effort. Uh, I, I do want to read some of this to you because it is uh, it, it's ridiculous in how dishonest or or deceptive it is. Today, U.S. Uh, yeah, May first, May first. Today, U.S. Representative Bobby L. Rush introduced H.R. 6666, the C. Uh, the CV Testing, Reaching, and contact, uh, Contacting Everyone Act. And uh, I think someone in the chat has already mentioned it. This is also known as the TRACE Act. This bipartisan bill would establish a grant program run by the CDC to fully mobilize CV testing and contact tracing efforts. Grantees would include community health centers, school-based health centers, academic medical centers, nonprofits, other entities who would hire and train individuals to operate mobile testing units, as well as outreach and hotspots and medically un underserved areas. In other words, anybody who freaking wants to set up a, uh, a, a one of these units to get money, just about anybody can. Uh, reopening our economy and getting back to normal will be all but impossible if we do not step up our testing efforts and implement robust and widespread contact tracing, said Rush. Until we have a compliance liquid to defeat this dreaded disease, contact tracing, in order to, uh, to understand the full breadth and depth of the virus, is the, uh, is the only way we will be able to get out from under this. So, the things that I was saying there in the beginning about how we read in that one longer article about there's three options open early before we're ready and let the, let the things spread again and have a big, bad second wave. Number two is to maintain the draconian lockdown until a, a uh, compliance liquid is ready to save us all. Or number three, open gradually, but have government contact tracing so that anytime anyone tests positive or is suspected to have tested positive, you can go into the database and pull every single person that they have been around. Why can they do that? Because if you have your phone and it is determined from your medical records that you have symptoms that sure seem like you have CV, Guess what? They can now look and see for the past two weeks, who have you come into contact with? And based on, on the, 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 uh, the, the legislation or the contact tracing program, you can now go and start tracking all of the people that you came into contact with during that time. Anyone you're within, say, six feet of for the last two weeks, because they probably have their phones with them too, and they can be tracked. 
your phones, me included, this is the, I mean, this is the worst thing you could possibly have. I am working on getting in the habit of, of, uh, not taking it with me. In fact, I, you know, I, I'm using more and more burner phones uh, for just my regular phone calls. In fact, that's why I decided that, uh, as part of this new giveaway thing, new prize thing is I, I can start including like 10 minute phone calls with people. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give out my personal number, but I can use one of my burner phones. And that way, if it's somebody who turns out they don't like me or something and they go and, you know, try and dox me by putting that phone number out, it won't matter. Cause I, you know, I only use the phone for a couple weeks anyway, but anyway, um, man, what a friggin' mess. But anyway, there are a lot of concerns about this and there is some false information that's being put out there. And so rush is there, there are people on two extremes. There are those who think that the trace act is authorizing things that it does not authorize. And so they're, they're saying, oh, it's going to do this and this and this they're speculating, not that they're necessarily wrong, but the act does not authorize that. Then you've got someone like rush, uh, who is on the other extreme where he denies things, but then doesn't own up to the fact that just because this particular bill does not authorize something that does not mean that it doesn't pave the way for new bills or uh, for other government agencies to presume that they have the authority under who knows whatever uh, excuse they come up with to do the things that that these people are concerned about. So he, he, he has these facts on his website. He says, what is the Trace Act? Uh, the C-19 testing, reaching and contacting everyone act is a comprehensive bipartisan bill that would establish a $100 billion grant program for local organizations to hire, train and pay individuals to run mobile testing units and conduct door to door outreach with special preference giving to those given to those operating in hotspots and medically underserved communities. The bill has officially been endorsed by whatever, a couple groups there. What is contact tracing? He says it's not a new concept. It's used all over the world to combat infectious diseases. Because CV is highly contagious, contact tracing helps us understand who has it, who they might have come in contact with, so we can better protect those potential patients uh, that don't even know that they're being monitored. According to the CDC, contact tracing is a core disease control measure and a key strategy for preventing further spread of C-19. Given that many people with CV are asymptomatic, contact tracing becomes even more important if we are serious about getting back to work as normal. Uh, moreover, we are currently witnessing more frequent testing in white affluent communities, but more CV cases and deaths in low income minority communities um, who would qualify for grants. Again, pretty much anybody. In fact, it says any other eligible entity deemed eligible by the CDC. Now, here's where he's he's trying to debunk stuff. Uh, does the Trace Act require testing? He says no. Trace is about providing testing to those who want or need it. Not everybody has the ability to visit drive-through testing sites, and many others are unable to leave their homes to get tested. This bill would allow the testers to come to you through mobile testing units and door to door outreach as is safe and necessary from members of your own community. However, if you don't want to be tested, you won't, you won't, don't, he says you won't, don't have to be, but you should. Now, th regarding this first point that he makes, it's correct. And I'll show you in a second. The text of the bill does not mandate that you must be tested, but that does not mean that, uh, of all the other government programs and government, uh, actions being taken that somewhere in there, whether it's the Trump administration or the house or Senate or local or state governments may very well say it is within our prerogative to say, if we come door to door, and uh, say that you need a test, you better take the test. There's nothing in the bill that says this has to be done, but there is nothing in the bill 
that protects you. And again, I'll show it to you in a second. The bill does not protect you if you don't want a, a test. Uh, another question, if I test positive, will I be forced to quarantine? He says, absolutely not. Again, these tests would be completely voluntary. The bill does not force you or your loved ones to do anything at all. With that being said, if you or your loved one does have it, it is advised that you do self-quarantine and maintain social distance from others. If you're experiencing system, symptoms, you should contact your physician and look into getting tested. Now, uh, again, does the bill say that you force you to be quarantined? No, but honestly, if you don't have teeth behind all of this, why would you pour a hundred billion dollars, let alone the other hundreds of billions of dollars the government is already allocating to things like biosurveillance and everything else. If these people are going to be taking our local community members and turning them against us and having them come knocking door to door, and they have reason to believe that we have this, you, you mean to tell me that they're not going to do like they do with something like, um, uh, you know, the, the every 10 years we have the uh, uh, the census, you know how, especially the last census, uh, what do you do if you don't want to answer the questions? What do you do if you want to don't want to talk to them, to this stranger and have them record on your census record what your uh, sexual preference is? What if you don't want to tell them that? What they do is they contact the authorities and they can come and arrest you. So don't tell me that the, the federal government and now our, our, our ever growing tyrannical state governments are not going to come and say, oh, you know what? Yeah, we think you have it. But and we think that based on all this data, you've been in touch with all these different people and you're probably going to keep going. You know what? You're right. You're an American citizen. You don't have to comply with anything. Have a great day. Have a great day. We'll see ya. We're just here to help. We're the government. Bull crap. Now, let me show you the bill. If you appreciate hard-hitting investigative journalism that you won't get from the mainstream media, then please support Jake's research and analysis at patreon.com forward slash end times news report, paypal.me forward slash end times news report, or send a check or money order to Jake Morphonios, PO Box 1333, Kernersville, North Carolina 27285. Uh, Trace Act, uh, HR 6666. It's short. I won't read all of it to you, but let me, let me read the main part. To author, HR 6666, to authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for CV and related activities such as contact tracing, through mobile health units and, as necessary, at individuals' residences and for other purposes. A bill to authorize them to do this, blah, 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 be enacted. Uh, it, here's the name of it, the Trace Act. Okay. The Secretary of Health and Human Services, acting through the Director of the CDC, may award grants to certain people to conduct testing to trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and to support the quarantine of such contacts. Does it say anything in there about how this is optional? No, it is saying this is to uh, deputize American citizens, make them agents of the federal government, basically, to come around and trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and support the quarantine through mobile health units, uh, testing individuals, providing individuals with services related to testing and quarantine at their residences. And then um, this is what they can use the, the money for. If, if you're one of these groups, 
uh, individuals or groups who gets permission to run your own, uh, you know, Stasi unit. You can use the money to hire people, to train people, to compensate, to pay the expenses of individuals. You can purchase uh, personal equipment and supplies. Priority is, you know, who gets it, distribution, federal requirements, nothing in this section will be construed to supersede uh, any uh, privacy or confidentiality, re confidentiality requirement, blah, 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 definitions. It's got a couple definitions there which is meaningless uh, for what we're talking about. And then authorization to carry it out. There is nothing in this bill that provides a, any measure of protection against government overreach. It does not say anywhere that you don't have to comply. So it leaves the, it leaves. So while, so both sides of the argument have a valid point. Rush's point, uh, Congressman Rush's point, is the bill doesn't mandate, it doesn't say you have to be tested, it doesn't say that you have to be quarantined, it doesn't say that you, another thing that he was talking about was uh, about having your children taken away from you. It doesn't say that your children have to be taken away from you. But then again, it doesn't say that you are protected from those things. It is giving the government a lot of rope to hang you with. So the people on this end who are saying, oh, it, 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 it's gonna, it, it mandates quarantining and stuff like that, that's not true. Don't think that the bill says that, but the bill does leave it open to that potentially happening. And that is the concern. Now, why I said in the beginning of this show that I see this, now compare this. <laughs> We've got this issue where into perpetuity, the federal government, in collusion with state and, and local governments, are now going to track everything you do, everywhere you go, can monitor your, your temperature, can, can monitor what you're buying, over-the-counter medicines, can, can track your children's school attendance, all of this and then send an an army of of uh deputized americans around to your house not to force you to quarantine but basically tell you you're supposed to quarantine yeah right like that's not going to get worse do you see how this is not only something that the federal government and state governments can use in this particular crisis but they can use it for everything remember after uh, back in 2001, after the things hit the towers, you remember what changed? Suddenly we have to start going through uh, a lot more airport security. Why? Because we there might be more hijackers out there. Well, you have to take your shoes off. Why? Because on one flight, somebody was trying to ignite, uh, allegedly trying to ignite uh a C4 or something that was in a shoe, maybe. So everyone had to, here we are in 2020, 19 years later, and we are still living under the same garbage that they rolled out then, even though the conditions have changed, the threat is gone, but they maintain it. So this is going to be here forever if we don't fight like hell against it. Raise holy hell. Get out there and stop worrying about the face mask and how that's taking away your liberties. Stop, stop griping about, uh, oh, I can't get my hair cut. Put that stupid haircut sign away and say, don't you dare pass the Trace Act. You are not freaking big brother. You don't have the right to invade my privacy. Get out there and fight for what matters. Not this other bull crap. And so much of that other bull crap, what is it motivated by? Left versus right. Left versus right. You know, all of these protests, they're, they're even half-hearted protests. You know, the, mostly what it is is Trump campaign, many, many Trump campaign rallies. That's what these protests are.
Every single one, they're out there waving the Trump flags. And, and they got the guns. Don't take away my guns. Despite the fact that Donald Trump's, you know, made lots of threats to take away guns. But instead of protesting that crap, they could, if they were sincere, they could just reopen their businesses. And then when the, uh, you know, when the county health department or whatever, or police come around to try and enforce it and force you to shut your doors, then you have your, your protest or your whatever, but that's not what they're doing. Cause that's not the real concern and today. What was trending on Twitter or yesterday was, uh, Oh, what was it? Re uh, resist, uh, resist bailouts, resist bailouts. So that's trending now. Resist bailouts of what? It, it's a concern over bailing out the blue states. Some of the blue states that are saying we have been hit especially hard because we've got heavier population centers. We want federal money for whatever, you know, which I don't think that I'm supporting that, but I'm talking about the hypocrisy of the argument. Clearly what that is, is a Trump versus blue states argument because these same people who are out there hashtagging resist bailouts. I didn't see anybody out there hashtagging resist bailouts when Donald Trump was was uh, bailing out the oil industry. I didn't see the $2 trillion that went to uh, these mega corporations and to the bankers in the form of hundreds of millions of dollars in fees and processing the uh, bailout checks that were sent to individuals. I didn't see any of these, these Trump supporters out there protesting that. I don't, I, I don't know of a single Trump supporter who got his stimulus check with the, you know, big Donald Trump thing on it and said, you know what? I'm against bailouts here. Please take the money back. So it's left versus right. It, it's that's what it is. This issue of surveillance is something that can unite us left and right because it affects all of us equally. This surveillance doesn't go and only target Democrats. It doesn't only target Republicans. It targets every single American. And it targets people all around the world. This is something where we could draw a line in the sand and everybody find common ground. If we can just tear ourselves away from this stupid, divisive mindset that we have to be at each other's throats over Trump versus Biden, rather than being, you know, going after the, the people who are doing this, which are the politicians, the elite class, these, these uh, tech company giants, the surveillance companies, they are the ones it's we, the people against them. If you'll let it be that fight, or you can remain divided and keep bickering about whatever stupid issue that you think is going to make Trump happy or whatever issue you think is going to make Bernie Sanders happy or whatever. And we'll all end up <laughs> because we will never unite. We will all end up on, in this surveillance state and it'll be worse off because we never figured out how to swallow our pride and stand together on something that, that <sighs> transcends partisanship. But anyway, Blackstone face masks are high quality. Each reusable mask is handmade by my wife using a double layer of 100% cotton. Inside the mask are two layers of a filtration material called non-woven interfacing that significantly reduces particles from passing through the mask. To ensure a proper fit, each mask uses four double stitch ties instead of cheap elastic bands that often break. The masks also have an inner plastic plastic coated wire over the nose bridge and cheekbones to mold the mask to your face. That reduces the chance of particles from slipping in through loose gaps along the edges. We have 18 styles to choose from. To browse our selection, visit blackstoneintel.com and click on the store button. Our family is using a portion of the sales proceeds to purchase materials to donate as many free masks as we can to hospitals through a program sponsored by Joanne Fabric. The goal is to reach 100 million masks. So you can feel good knowing that your purchase not only helps protect your family while supporting mine, but you're also contributing to help our nation's healthcare workers. So visit blackstoneintel.com and buy a mask for each member of your family today.